Welcome to the level 1 financial reporting and analysis summary video series. This video is a summary of the reading on financial statement analysis applications. This is fairly straightforward projecting future financial performance. So you need to know that companies or you if you are evaluating a company forecast sales generally the way you do that is you forecast expected GDP growth forecast expected industry sales based on historical relationship with GDP consider expected change in the company's market share and then forecast the sales then you forecast expenses use historical margins for stable firms for less stable firms estimate each expense item remove any non-recurring items and estimate interest expense and tax expense separately because they are generally not a function of sales tax expense interest expense would be a function of debt and tax expense you calculate after figuring out your profit before tax then you forecast cash flows which you can do based on the balance sheet and the income statement or you can estimate changes in working capital estimate investment expenditures estimate dividend payments and based on that come up with forecasted cash flows assessing credit risk imagine you are an analyst you are looking at financial statements to assess the credit risk of a company what do you look at ability of issuer to meet interest and principal payments on schedule that's what you are looking for you look at a cash flow forecast if the cash flow forecast is good then the credit risk is low variability of cash flows if variability of cash flows is high then the risk is high consider business risk and financial risk self-evident size and scale total revenue operating profit for large companies with high revenue stable operating profits the risk is low business profile revenue sustainability and efficiency if the revenue is sustainable and the company is operating efficiently then the credit risk is low you look at financial leverage and flexibility if the leverage ratios are high then the risk is high if the coverage ratios are high then the risk is low debt to EBITDA if this ratio involves high debt and low EBITDA which means if this ratio is high then that is a negative free cash flow to debt free cash flow high is good low debt is good so if this ratio is high that is good you are obviously looking for high liquidity ratios screening for potential equity investments first just recognize the different kinds of investors growth investors focus on investing in high earnings growth companies value investors are focused on paying a relatively low share price in relation to eps or book value per share so they are looking for relatively low pe stocks or relatively low price to book value stocks market investors are in between they are simply looking for stocks that are undervalued if an analyst wants to keep risk low what criteria is he likely to use so here are some criteria he look for low pe asset to equity ratio leverage ratio he would want low he would want a company to be paying dividends and ideally he'd want all these sorts of criteria this would have been a difficult concept before you studied equity but now that you are doing a review hopefully you have also done equity so you recognize the links when you come up with a screen and you say that okay based on this screen here are the stocks that i'm going to buy one of the things that you should do is back testing you should say that if i had used the same method the same screen to buy something three years ago for example then how would that portfolio have performed so the process of doing that is called back testing evaluate how a portfolio based on a particular screen would have performed historically and then when doing back testing you need to be aware of survivorship bias look ahead bias and data spooping bias and on this slide i've summarized the line or two that you need to know about each of these biases as an analyst when you compare different companies you have to make adjustments because different companies might be using different accounting standards they might be making different assumptions for example if you have company a and b company a tends to classify financial assets as available for sale b as trading now will they have different net income impacts 
The answer is yes, because a company doing AFS will show any gain or loss in OCI. The company categorizing as trading is going to show the unrealized gain loss in net income. So if they are similar in all other respects, then you have to make an adjustment before you compare. If one company uses FIFO, the other uses LIFO, then again, you have to bring both to FIFO before comparing. And FIFO inventory is LIFO inventory plus LIFO reserve. Goodwill. Company A and Company B are identical except that A has grown through acquisition and B has grown organically. Which company will have more goodwill? The company that has grown through acquisition will obviously have more goodwill because goodwill shows up on the balance sheet only when you buy a company. So just because the company has more goodwill and will have higher assets doesn't make it better than the other company. So very often what you do as an analyst is use tangible book value. So when you compare companies, you only look at the tangible assets. You pull out the intangibles such as goodwill. If you are comparing company A and B, A uses operating leases, B uses financial leases. Will the balance sheets and income statements be different because of the different treatment of leases? The answer is yes. Very often the solution is to take all the operating leases and say that if these operating leases are capitalized, then what will the impact be on the financial statements? This is a slide that talks about estimates related to property, plant and equipment, and it also connects with the reading on long lived assets. Nothing here is too difficult. If you want to estimate the years of useful life which are passed, then the calculation is accumulated depreciation over gross PP and D. And this is simple but highly testable. So I want you to also look through the rest of the estimates and the calculations. So that is it. We are done with this very long topic. And I've tried to cover almost all the important points. But as I keep saying, key is not just to listen to these lectures, but to do a ton of practice. If you found this lecture helpful, then I'll be very grateful if you can do three things for me. Number one, like this video. Number two, like my Facebook page. And number three, visit analystforum.com and there add my logo to your studying with profile. You can see this slide for help on how to do that. Thank you very much and good luck with your studies.